Today we will do another really cool photo manipulation. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode. Today I will show how I did this really cool photo manipulation, a rocket buried in the mountain sometime in the future. It's a second photo in a rocket series, so I hope that you will like it. You will definitely learn some cool tips, tricks and techniques from this one that you can later implement in your own photos, in your own projects. So sit back, relax, enjoy and let the fun begin. Alright guys, today we'll start with the blank document. The size is 2000 with 2500. It's 4x5 aspect ratio because I will put it on Instagram. So that's why I choose this. In case you want to put it somewhere else, just choose any kind of aspect ratio that you need. Okay, so let's go and browse some photos. This is the part of the background that I will use. I will just copy and paste it here and put it all the way down below. So this is a desert. Okay, then let's go and find, we will use the rocket, we will use the mountain, so let's copy the mountain back here, paste it and we will see about the position probably somewhere here, like this, and we will later stretch the sky and let's do actually that right now, so. Okay, this is mountain. And what I like to do now, I like to blend this mountain photo with the desert. How? Really easily. Just uh, use the layer mask. I want to zoom it. I want to use brush. Really soft one. So 0% hardness. This is the brush, the soft one. And uh, I want to use 100% opacity, a little bit bigger brush. And just slowly blend this down. Maybe I will nudge it a little bit more down like that. Okay. And just blend with this. So easy to do. It just takes a little bit time, but time is something that we have here a lot, not. So let's blend this better. I will go with the harder brush because I want harder edge here. So something like, like this just blend better even harder harder brush and maybe a little bit smaller so this is cool and i want to blend it right here too so something like this goes really really nice and also now i, wa uh, I want to go back to soft brush and go back here and fix these oops these things with the white color okay this is cool this is cool and this is pretty pretty decent blend guys because I will watch the photo from this distance so I will not go into the details if you need more details then I suggest to spend a little bit more time tweaking all these things here and there and make it even better but for the purpose of this tutorial this is pretty good okay now let's stretch the sky a little bit let's go here let's use rectangular marquee tool just select the sky like this press ctrl or command t and just stretch this oops not too much just the top like this and nobody will notice that the sky is stretched it's really cool so that's perfect another thing that you can do you can just uh, get rid of this sky and put another sky if you're up to that that if you want to change to put some other sky in the photo just make sure to pay attention on the lights where the light is hitting the clouds etc so as you can see here the light is coming from our left side it's hitting the mountain it's hitting the dunes here and and putting the shadow down below it's not like a, like a afternoon sky it's more like just past noon or before noon depends on the um, compass orientation i don't know but it's really cool and now let's add let's add the rocket so let's go here as you can see, this is a rocket. I already extracted it out of the background just for the sake of this tutorial. And I will go right here, paste it. Okay, I already named it rocket and put it somewhere here. As you can see, the rocket has a different uh, lighting conditions. Actually, it's from different sides. So I just want to flip it horizontally. Control or Command T to enter transform mode. Right click, flip horizontal, and that's it. That's perfect. And maybe I will make it smaller. Maybe a little bit smaller, something like this. 
let me see, I can just lower the opacity to see the position of the rocket, so this looks pretty decent somewhere here and the size it's cool it's a huge huge thing huge rocket so i will leave it like that let's go back with the opacity to 100 percent and now before i merge things together i just want to fix the colors and the contrast of those three elements on the photo so first the mountains i want to go and add color balance adjustment layer clip it to affect only the mountain so whatever i do now it will affect only the mountain layer and what I want to do, let's hide the rocket to have a better impression. What I want to do is just to add a little bit of the redness and yellowness on the midtone. So yellow, reds, and that's it. It's pretty nice, pretty nice blend. Okay, now let's go to the rocket. The rocket is pretty cool with the colors, but it lacks contrast a little bit. As you can see, the blacks are washed out and we can make it better by adding curves adjustment layer, clip it to affect the rocket and just add a little bit of the contrast as you can see maybe even to emphasize the blacks a little bit and as you can see this looks much better now it's before and after now it fits the image so the next step will be to bury the rocket inside the mountain so how to do that well it's really easy you just need to delete parts of the rocket that you don't want to see and you're done so it's easy like that but you need to choose a proper brush for it. I will use my cloud smoke dust brushes because I really love them and I use them in a lot of cases. If you're following this channel, you know that already. In case you don't know how to make your own brushes like that, you can follow my tutorial about that right here. Or you can go to my website and purchase my set of these brushes for just $1. The link is down there in the description so you can check it out. It's up to you. All right, so I will go to the rocket. I will add a layer mask and I will choose first brush, then I will choose my set of cloud brushes and I will use this one, the second one. And that's cool. Also, I will make sure to have 100% opacity and just, I just want to delete parts that I don't want to be seen here. And because this is completely upside down, I will delete that too. And guys, again, I'm now showing you just the techniques, tips and tricks, how you can do this kind of stuff. I will not do it perfectly right now because to do it like perfectly or much better, I need more time. So this is just for the sake of the tutorial. I will just do it fast and just to show you the tips, tricks and techniques. And then when you're doing your photos, using these techniques, these tips and tricks, you need to spend a little bit more time doing it. So have that in mind. And uh, the point of this tutorial is not you just to copy this artwork is just for you to get familiar with some techniques and the ways how you can do similar things on your own. So now let's make a brush a little bit smaller and I just want to brush out these parts. I don't want this to be visible at all. This is all buried in the mountains. So maybe just more part of this and this and let me see, this will be completely underground. Maybe it doesn't look yet like it's under the mountain, but trust me guys, it is. Okay, let's bring back this. And here we can choose which part we want to reveal of the mountain, which part we don't want, etc. But this is cool. Also the center part here, I don't want everything to be visible just some parts here and there let's unzoom it as you can see it's already looking nice oops like this like that that's really really cool and guys i will stop somewhere here but yeah we can tweak this even more but the point is that you need to have impression to make impression that the rocket is buried inside the mountain so this looks pretty decent so before the the process and after the process is really cool again what you need to do now is to add some kind of shadows on the mountain and probably on a rocket too so we will do that on the rocket i will create another curse adjustment layer clip it to affect only the rocket and just make everything darker 
put it in luminosity blending mode to have an effect only the lights, not the colors, and press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. And now I will go with a regular soft round brush, okay, and just paint with the white color, maybe 10% opacity, just add some shadows on these darker parts of the rocket, okay, just add a little bit more shadows to match the overall lighting conditions, okay, especially here, this should be darker like that, okay, and uh, now we'll do the same for the mountains, so let's go here, curves, make everything darker, like it's this probably okay and put it in luminosity blending mode and invert control or command I and I will just paint some parts of the mountain that should be probably darker like this because the rocket is here maybe it's casting a shadow maybe here a bit like this and this is pretty much okay so just a little bit here and there. I really like it. So let me show you before that and after just a little bit more punch to emphasize the effect overall effect of the rocket being buried inside the mountain. So this is it. Now let's add a few more details to the image. Let's add a few camels, uh, Bedouins, etc. So to make it even more interesting. Let's go right here and I want to add this guy. So you can use maybe let me show you really quickly. You can use quick selection tool and just quickly select the guy and put it in the photo. That's one way to do it. And in this situation, it's pretty fast way, as you can see. Or another way is to just say, hey, Photoshop, can you select the subject for me? And that's it. He selected the subject, but not quite good. You need to refine some edges here and there. But as you can see, it's pretty decent. I need to just refine a few things, but that's cool. Let's press Q to see what's selected. Really cool. Now I will copy this and paste it right here and I will put this guy inside the sand. I am a giant in the sand. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Actually, I need to put this layer all the way up. And I think this is how you spell it. Right, and I will put it all the way down here, but the lights it's off, so it's opposite. We need to flip it. So control command T, right click, flip horizontal, and now it's much better. And this guy is looking towards the rocket. I really love it. So I will position him somewhere here. And also we can use curves to dodge him a little bit more. So I will invert it. And then I will use white brush, 10% opacity, and just just dodge him a little bit more to make this, this side a little bit darker. Okay. And of course you can spend a little bit more time to dodge all those details, etc. But we will not do that now. This is cool. So let me see just a bit more before and after, yeah, just a small subtle difference, but it's cool. So let's make it even, even darker. Oh yeah, I made a mistake guys. I set the opacity to 10%, but no problem. Now I can have more control with the curve. So this is really nice. Let me see one more time before and after. Perfect. Okay. Right now let's add some camels in the scene to populate the scene even more. So let's find the camels. Okay, one is right here. I already made a selection, just rough selection of everything. It's not precise at all, but it will work, you will see. Okay, I will just paste it right there and name it camel. and make it smaller. So I want to make it a lot smaller because I want to put a camel somewhere here. Okay, like it's going down the dune, down the hill. And uh, it's already from the other side of this dune right here. So I probably make it even smaller. Let's do it like this for now and then we can decide it. And I will put a layer mask, use a black brush, 
harder brush, something like 80% or so, and black color with 100% opacity. I just want to delete, to erase all of these because I actually don't need it. Like I need to make impression that the camel is already going down the hill. Okay, so for now it's cool. And let's find another photo that I like this one. I want just to select all those camels with those two guys. I already did that. And I will just copy it and uh, paste it right there. They are too big too. I need to make it smaller. Control Command T. Just make it smaller. I want to put them somewhere here, like almost at the edge of this, this thing right there. So let me see. Mm. Probably here is okay. So this is cool. Maybe this camel needs to be a bit smaller. Like that and edge it up. So this is cool. And these guys here pretty decent. We can just make them a little bit more reddish with color balance, clip it to affect only the layer and just add a little bit more red redness. Oh, I'm playing with the camel. But don't worry, I supposed to do that with the camel, so we are doing this now. Okay, and then with these guys right here, so camels and guys. What a creative name for a layer. Okay, so color balance, clip to effect only that and just make them a little bit more reddish. This is pretty decent and and that's it. Of course, you can you can tweak it even more. You can add uh, some more. Um, actually, not add, but you can dodge it and burn it, etc. Maybe you can add some smoke here, some dust from the, the sand, etc. But this is pretty decent right now. Okay, and that's the final thing. Now you can add whatever of elements you want to add in the photo. You can add a lot of things here. You can be creative, and I am. I, I will add some kind of uh, spaceships, some small shuttles that I made in Cinema 4D just for this example, because I couldn't find it online. I decided to make it myself. So where it is, is this small photo, as you can see, really nice spaceships for this. Oh, they're too small, you cannot see it. So let's zoom it. Ooh, this is really cool. All right, and I will just copy them and paste them right here. And this is it, it's already everything cool with the positions and everything because I made it in Cinema 4D, but like it's a future and those shuttles are going to investigate this uh, recently discovered rocket buried inside a mountain. This is really, really nice. There are two different types of spaceships of shuttles, this one and uh, these ones here. So what we can do right here, let me just show you pretty quickly. I don't like this shadow, so I will just select it. Okay, this is spaceships and I will just press Control shift J or Command shift J to to cut the shadow on a separate layer and I will just go and just flip it like this. Okay, something like that and I, I like it much better. I will do the same for this shadow. I just wanted to have it in a separate layer. You will see why. Shift Control J or Shift Command J. So those are shadows number, actually shadow without S, shadow number one, shadow number two. And I want to group those two shadows in a group by pressing Control Command J. And I will go and add a few saturation adjustment layer. Let's do it differently this time. And I just want to say colorize, all right? And I just want to make shadows a little bit more reddish because they're on the sand, they're not like completely black. So this is really cool. Maybe something like, like that, like that. This is perfect. So before and after, as you can see, it's much better. Let me show before and after. So make sure the shadows are not always like black, black, black. They're usually in some kind of a tone, some kind of a color. So this is basically it. Now what we can do, we can play with, uh, the shuttles here to add some lighting effects, etc. Like I did in a previous tutorial with the spaceships, so you can check it out. If you didn't watch that, you can watch it on the link right here. But let me just show you real quick. I'll not do that right now. I will just show you. We can put a layer into linear dodge blending mode, choose a color, blue, but maybe darker tone of a blue, and just 
oops, with really soft brush and with maybe 20% opacity, just add some kind of lights here and maybe here too, okay? And we can do that on all shadows, but I'm just showing you the tricks. Now we can go with another color uh, linear dodge blending mode layer, but put it below that and use white color. So what I like to do, I like to use white color and just add like more brightness inside. Like the inside is brighter. And then I can do with another linear dodge with the blue color. So we'll choose a blue color and make it darker because it will better fit. And that's that's really cool. So this is it. This is much better, much in more interesting. And you can do on all these, actually on your own elements or whatever you figure it out. It doesn't need to be uh, the space shuttle. It can be whatever you want. It doesn't need to be a rocket. You can bury whatever you want inside the ground. But this is my story, my version, my artwork. So the point again of this tutorial is just for uh, me showing you tips, tricks and techniques how you can do your own thing right here. So now I will merge everything together and do a final color grading. Let me show you that too and we are done. And also you can see my final version of this image uh, at my Instagram account, so check it out. I will merge everything together with a famous shortcut, keyboard shortcut, uh, Shift Control Alt and Shift Command Option on a Mac. And then I can do in, uh, go in the filter, camera row, Okay, and now let's play with some settings. So first what I like to do, I like to change the colors. I like to go to hue and saturation and I want to lower the saturation of orange, a little bit of the yellows and definitely of blues. I want a little bit washed out color. Then what I like to do is to go to hue and maybe add a little bit more redness in the oranges and yellows and then we can go to calibration and do something like orange and teal look just a little bit. Okay, I like something like this. So already big difference before and after, I really like it. Also I can go back to luminance in uh, HSL tab and I want to bring the blues a little bit brighter. So blues a little bit brighter, that's cool and also maybe Mm, just a touch something like this maybe less saturated that's cool then what we can do we can add some kind of vignetting a little bit just a little bit and also I want to add a little bit of contrast open shadows a touch I want to add a texture and clarity and maybe dehaze it actually add a haze just maybe a touch okay and I want to go right here to to this graduated filter and add some kind of a brightness here like the sun is coming from this way so why not also let me see this is cool okay so just a bit bright let me see before and after yeah really nice difference before and after also i can go back and maybe add a little bit more warmer tone in a temperature or if you want you can go with the cooler but i will go with the warmer lower again the saturation add vibrance and maybe change yeah well, i can go to split toning and i can add some kind of warm tone in the shadows and maybe some cool tones in the highlights just a bit like like this why not let me see oh this is cool too but I'll do like that. I want to sharpen it a bit, lower the radius, mask this out to see what I will sharpen, what will be affected by this by holding Alt or Option key. I'm, I'm seeing this mask right here. So this is cool. And uh, that's, that's pretty cool. That's basically, I can play a little bit more with the colors. Yeah, I like it this way. Mm. Usually guys, what I like to do in these kind of situations, I like to just press OK, see if this is this is fitting my taste. And then I like to do two things. One is to put the black and white adjustment layer and to look a little bit, all right, to look a little bit in this black and white version of the photo just to 
rest my eyes from the colors. And then I like to go back to the color version and say, uh -huh, okay, this is good or it's not good. I want to change maybe to a different tone uh, or um, to tweak some colors a little bit, etc. Or I can just leave the computer and table here, go walk a little bit, rest my eyes from these colors, see natural colors and go back here to see my photo and decide if I need to change some colors. All right, so this is it. This is what we made today. Let me just show you really quickly before color grading, after color grading, I like this version much better and that's it. All right, guys, so this is it for today. We are finally done with this photo. I hope that you like it. I hope that you learn a lot of interesting tips, tricks and techniques from this tutorial that you can later use in your own artworks, in your own projects to be able to make even better and creative images. If you, uh, if you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer them. And also guys, if you like this episode, if you appreciate this content, just press the like button, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. I'm not sure if the bell is still working, but just ring it. It's half a second of work. Also guys, if you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by supporting me via my Patreon page and also you will get some things in return like PSD files, etc. So check it out. The link is down there in the description. Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun tutorial. Bye bye.